we're joined today by former mayor Sadaf Jaffer, who is running for the assembly in LD16. And I'd like to welcome you to our forum, Mayor. Thanks so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. Well, I'd just like to start with uh, the uniqueness of your candidacy. You're a scholar. And in New Jersey politics, I don't think we have too many scholars. In fact, it, it almost seems like a contradiction at times. And could you tell me a little bit about how, well, your academic background and your studies and your expertise, and then how you believe that you can make that of use for the constituents of the 16th district? Absolutely. So my background is in South Asian studies and uh, Asian American studies, and I actually teach courses on uh, Islam in South Asia through literature and film and South Asian American literature and film at Princeton University. And I do absolutely believe that having a background in global studies and history and literature helps you make better decisions. And I will give a, an example of that, that when we saw the COVID-19 pandemic approaching, I actually started reading through the history books about how pandemics had affected the United States before, how they had affected the world before, what sorts of issues um, did people face. And I was also watching what was happening in China, in Italy, in Iran, the, some of the first countries that really saw the COVID-19 pandemic. And so because of that, I was able to be, I, I believe, better prepared. And Montgomery was one of the first municipalities to close down, to be very cautious. We actually had our municipal building and our schools closed before we had our first case of COVID-19 in Montgomery. And I believe that that helped us keep some of the lowest infection and fatality rates in the state of New Jersey. So I do believe that having a background in history, in global studies, we're an interconnected world, you know, and we're not facing problems that no one else has faced. Societal problems exist everywhere. Mm -hmm. And I also think that, you know, I have an academic background and so all of the decisions that I make are research-based. I truly believe in looking into the research, talking to experts, gaining their perspective, and then consulting with the public to make the decisions that really do serve the best interests of the community. Mm -hmm. So how did you initially get into politics? That, that seemed, you seem a, like a data-driven researcher and it's not an ivory tower for you. you. You've been interested in engaging with the public. How did that come about? I think I always had that interest. Uh, when I was a high schooler, I actually participated in a program called the Future Leaders of Chicago. And uh, that was all about city government in Chicago and the problems that the city was facing. And I think that that was really a first glimpse into how to be solutions oriented. I also uh, often tell the story that when I was a kid, my dad held mock presidential debates between my brother and I, um, whenever he had long car rides. So he was an avid newspaper reader and you know listening to NPR and that sort of thing. So I guess he tried to entertain himself by having us debate each other. But again, it it planted the seed in my mind that you don't just complain about issues or think of them as something outside of you, but you really try to address them. So, you know, my scholarship as well is based on global studies, but it's to educate the public. I mean, through my students to make sure that they are well informed as they go into the world. Um, but I am also kind of an impatient person. So I didn't just want to teach my students and have them impact the world. Um, I wanted to directly make that impact. So that's when I first started thinking about running for political office is around 2013. And I applied for the Emerge New Jersey program, which is for women from the Democratic wow. Party who are interested in running for office. Before that point, I had never known anyone who'd run for office. It just wasn't in my purview. I had campaigned for President Obama twice, but that was basically the extent of my political, real political engagement. Mm -hmm. And through that, I connected to different political groups and started understanding the nitty gritty of how it works. And I saw people that I really respected. I mean, um, I would say that definitely people in academia or even my family didn't really understand, like, why would you go from academia, which seems like this really rarefied, nice uh, environment yeah. and go into politics that has a pretty bad reputation. But I would say that most elected officials really are trying to do the best for their communities. Um, they might disagree on how that should be accomplished, but I have found that 
there really isn't the need to be as cynical as people are about their elected officials. And you can make a lot of positive change by getting involved in the process. Well, you're also originally from Chicago. So, yes. so that prepares you for what you're getting involved in here, I would guess. Maybe, but it also, you know, I, there were great struggles, like the labor struggle in Chicago, um, you know, the struggle for racial equality, uh, gender justice. There's so many great figures that I learned about even as an elementary student. And also, I had the benefit of being in class with students from all different backgrounds, um, you know, going to a Chicago, Chicago public schools. And actually, my elementary school had various different programs and actually had a very extensive hearing impaired, deaf uh, program and uh, visually impaired program. So, you know, we studied sign language. I just feel like I was really blessed to ha have that diverse experience all the way from childhood. And I'd like to bring that into, you know, any sort of community building that I do today. Well, that's a, a major uh, offering for New Jersey because the place tends to be very parochial. We, we tend to pride ourselves on going inward and becoming as small as possible rather than stretching outward and, and being global in our thinking. Something I've noticed having covered it for years. So that, that is new, I would say. Um, could you tell me a little bit about what you'd like to do, what you'd like to focus on in the legislature, and what do you think the specific needs are right now of your community that you want to address in the legislature? So the theme of my candidacy, as I understand it now, is prosperity and justice for all. And there's three you know, major elements of that. One is to invest in a green economy and a green recovery. Uh, there's a lot of potential for job creation, especially in LD16 in central New Jersey and New Jersey all uh, more broadly, that, you know, we have an opportunity and we really should invest in creating those jobs that will create a sustainable future. Uh, central Jersey also has a lot of potential for agritourism and investing in our farms and really focusing on grown in New Jersey, uh, you know, made in New Jersey, those sorts of initiatives, uh, promoting tourism within our state, I think, a lot of times people go outside of the state for entertainment and let's 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 keep that within New Jersey. So that's you know one element of, of my platform. The seven, the second is civil and human rights uh, is really a passion of mine. I think that my activism is what led me to want to go into politics to enact policies that were in line with my values. And we've seen you know such a demand for racial justice and a response to it. So I definitely want to continue that to ensure that we have diversified police departments, but all, all different fields of work should have diverse workforces, um, working on pipeline programs, investing in those. And then the third element of my platform would be an inclusive response to COVID-19 and the pandemic. I think that you know, our state was hit really hard. We did a good job considering the situation that we were in, but we need to make sure that we have equitable access to vaccines, to testing, um, to safety for safety for workers, and that you know our frontline workers, including teachers, are able to access the vaccines that they need to be protected in the workplace. So those are kind of some of my overall goals and visions. Uh, if I do, hopefully, make it into the assembly. It's a time of a lot of division and a lot of cynicism. You used the word earlier about politics and. Why do you see now as a good time to get in when a lot of people are running away from it? I don't know if a lot of people are running away from it. I think that, you know, over the last four to six years, we've seen a lot of people say, okay, you know what? I'm not just going to sit on the sidelines. I have to get involved. And I would even say within academia, um, I think that when I started thinking about it in 2013, 2014, people kind of looked askance, like, why would you bother? But we've seen with a global pandemic, with the renewed calls for racial justice, no one is outside of their society. Like we're all impacted by what's going on around us. And we are not protected just because we're in the bubble of Princeton or we're in the bubble of something else. Right. We have to get involved because somebody's making those decisions. So it might as well be people who have the right values or values that we think are, are correct for our society. You're used to making history. You're, the, you're the, the first woman Muslim mayor in the country. And now you're the first, what, what are your, 
what are the implications of your candidacy in LD16? You're the first woman in some time to uh, be in a position to represent uh, the Democratic Party here. Mm -hmm. uh, can you talk to that a little bit? Sure, yes. So as far as my research goes, I believe I'll be the first Asian American woman to serve in the state legislature and the first Muslim period, mm -hmm. uh, man or woman to serve in the state legislature. So I think inclusion is very important. Representation is very important because that's how we hear about what different communities need. Um, I can give an example of that. When I was, you know, when we were going through the pandemic, some people approached me and said that some of the undocumented people in my community were afraid to go to the food pantry because they were afraid that they might face some sort of immigration enforcement and not be protected. And um, so I raised this issue with various mayors and they hadn't heard about it. And then I realized that I was the only non-white person <laughs> amongst the people that I was speaking with and you know, the only person from an immigrant background so maybe people just feel more comfortable telling me these things. Um, so it, it just goes to show you that we need that representation because then otherwise you're only hearing from your networks and your bubble and you don't know what other people are facing. And so, you know, with a, for a state with a 10% Asian American population, right. to not have a single Asian American woman mm -hmm. is, you know, it's time. Looking back on the Trump years, what uh, in your mind, were the most harmful or hurtful impact points that you observed or felt? And, and looking forward, uh, how do you see us as a country overcoming some of the things that that period of time exposed? Sure. So research shows that political leaders have a huge impact on rates of hate crimes, rates of you know, political violence and things of that nature in, in, in the broader society. So everyone, I think, would agree that Trump had a certain type of rhetoric all the way from his candidacy through his entire pres presidency. That was anti-immigrant, I would say racist, misogynistic. Um, and that was mirrored in what we saw in society with skyrocketing rates of hate crimes, bias crimes, and Actually, on my first year on the township committee in Montgomery, there was an anti-Muslim bias crime where someone left pork on a Muslim family's car. And you know, people didn't really know how to respond, but the research shows again that if you let symbolic violence pass, then it just keeps escalating. Right. And so I started a discussion group called Montgomery Mosaic to bring people together to talk about anti-Black racism, Islamophobia, anti-Semitism, we had various uh, community breakfasts, for example, after the anti-Semitic attack in Jersey City, we had a community breakfast in the municipal building that was packed with leaders from all over the community. We had the president of the local synagogue speak. We had our police director speak, um, since those were the two communities that had been targeted in that attack. Um, so I think that these efforts help kind of counter the, the attempts to rent our social fabric apart. You know, we, we need each other. Ultimately, we're all neighbors and we can't, and hate doesn't know boundaries. You know, like if you allow one sort of hate, it just keeps growing and growing and growing. Like as human beings, we all have the potential to hate, but we also have the potential to be cooperative, to work together. So that's what I would really want to do. I think that's just my nature is to bring people together, to be a community builder um, and and I'm hopeful that we will be able to do it. Um, and, and I think the local is a really promising place for that because ultimately you really are neighbors. The more distance there is, the, more, the easier it is to kind of think that someone's horrible or that all people from a certain group are horrible. Um, so I would really wanna work with local leaders. I, and I think that's really one of the other things that I wanna focus on in the assembly is having round tables with local mayors, with local electeds, with religious leaders, with business leaders to think about what does this district need? How can we come together and not see things as it's either I get the piece of the pie or you get the piece of the pie, but it's really prosperity for everyone. And if we're a prosperous state, that benefits everyone. Um, but And let's make sure it's done in an equitable manner. Mayor Sadaf Jaffer, who is now running as a Democrat in the 16th legislative district, 
we really look forward to covering your candidacy and covering the contest and really appreciate your time today, Mayor, uh, and uh, so look forward to talking to you in the near future. Thank you so much. It was really great talking to you as well. Is there anything you want to add? I just want to say, you know, I, as I said, I don't think there's a reason to be cynical about politics. I think people can make a dif difference. Even just writing some postcards can have a voter turnout change. We've seen elections that have been decided by one vote. Um, every vote counts. Your voice matters. Your elected officials are accountable to you. Um, I just want the public to feel a sense of ownership over their government and to feel empowered to participate. Thank you so much.